All right. Welcome to today's show, insurance, Ugh, right? I know you, I don't know about you, but if you're like me, I cringe at how much I spend on insurance every year. Car, house, life, disability, health, and whatever else. But dang, aren't you glad to have it when you need it? I know I was pretty happy that I was insured last year because we had a flood at my house. Now today I have Sonia Blackburn on the show and she's a self-professed um, insurance nerd. And um, she's gonna share with, uh, share with us some things to be thinking about from an insurance perspective when considering doing a renovation. So welcome to the All Things Renovation show, Sonia, and thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me, Brandy. <laughs> awesome. So as I mentioned, Sonia's an insurance person. She's a general insurance broker with over 19 years of experience in the industry, and she represents Shaw Sabi and Associates, a member of the Access Insurance Group. She assists with a wide variety of both residential and commercial clients and specializes in identifying potential exposures to loss to ensure that her clients have the proper coverage in the right place in the unfortunate event of a claim. Now you may be wondering, what does insurance have to do with renovation? So let's jump into it. First of all, Sonia, what would be some of the basic things that a homeowner should be checking for when hiring a potential contractor, you know, whether it's a minor home repair or something that's larger? Uh, well, there's many things that you need to look out for, but one big thing to start with is, is your contractor insured? You want to make sure you're dealing with a reputable, reputable contractor that's going to be able to handle any issues that come up uh, in a swift and um, fast nature should anything happen. Um, you also want to take a look at what their insurance coverages are. Are they insured for the operations that they are providing you? Uh, it's, many people have insurance, uh, but it doesn't necessarily mean that a, an electrician is insured to do plumbing work. So you want to make sure that they are insured actually for the operations that they are offering you and that they're able to provide you a certificate of insurance confirming those operations. Another thing to think about when you are uh, looking for a contractor is are they providing you a clear scope of work? Most claims that go sideways are because of a miscommunication. It's usually not uh, an, an issue of one party not wanting to do the work that they're, uh, we're expecting or we're to provide. It's because it wasn't properly communicated to begin with. So you wanna make sure that you have a clear scope of work so that way you can provide all of that information to your broker when you're looking at your own insurance needs and ensure that you're covered properly. Yeah, I mean, communication, I, I'm always talking about communication with any of our clients, and it's a, a universal truth, no matter what industry you're in, so that's a really good thing to do. Now, when you're saying um, you should be checking their insurance certificate, how does one go about getting that? Do I request it from said contractor, or do I kind of go through a, a, a back door to find who they're insured with and then get it directly from that insurance company? So no, there's no back door, doors required. You can just directly ask the contractor for a copy of their insurance certificate. On this insurance certificate, there is going to be a portion uh, at, at the top of the certificate usually that clearly states description of operations, which says what the contractor is insured for. Uh, if it's a general contractor, it may just say general contractor. And that usually means that they are insured for providing most um, operations of um, construction, uh, but if it's maybe an electrician or a plumber, something on the, along those lines, you may find firms that do offer more than one service and each of those services should be listed in that area. Ah, good stuff. All right, so if a homeowner were to be doing a, a larger scope of work as far as a renovation is concerned, what if any adjustments would be needed to their homeowner policies? So uh, homeowners policies do not generally automatically cover any kind of renovation or, or construction operations. You always want to make sure that you let your broker know when you're doing any type of renovation or upgrade to your home. There's a number of reasons for this. Um, one question you need, want to ask yourself is, are you adding to the value of your home? If you're adding to the value of your home, your limits of insurance may no longer represent the amount of coverage that you need. 
Uh, another uh, point and note of concern is that when you are performing any type of renovation at your home, coverages automatically are restricted. Um, depending on the type of renovation, are you doing structural changes? Are you, is it just gonna be cosmetic changes? Um, you need to ask your broker um, what coverages are going to be restricted during that period. Typically, automatically under any kind of renovation, you're gonna find your water damage coverages will be restricted to um, none or definitely at least uh, sewer backup uh, coverages would be restricted if you're doing any kind of plumbing or any type of renovation. Your liability coverages also will be restricted under the course of renovation. Um, there's also a number of different coverages such as glass breakage, vandalism, things like that that you want to make sure that you're aware of um, and find out if you have the option to buy those coverages back in either during the renovation or when the renovation gets to a certain point of completion. Right. So then, then what I'm hearing too is that if you were to do a renovation and it is going to increase, increase the value of the home, then the, for sure people would have to go back afterwards and say, hey, the value of my home has now been increased. The coverage that I require is going to have to go up to cover off any of the um, improvements that have been made so that, um, you know, if God forbid the house burns down, that you're fully covered for any of those things that would go on. Yeah. Correct. What's also important to note, though, is um, reporting these changes to your insurer doesn't always necessarily mean that you're going to pay more for your insurance coverage. Sometimes you may, in fact, find out you're going to pay less. If you're doing a roof upgrade, a plumbing upgrade, electrical upgrades, maybe you're installing a security system, these things can actually reduce your premiums. Uh, and only by talking to your insurance broker are you going to really find out uh, what benefits you can find on that side as well. So it's really important that you have that conversation. Also, one thing I didn't touch on, it, uh, what you did ask, is if, if a client um, or a person has to move out of their home during the renovation process, automatically the house becomes vacant. Um, most policies, if not all, do restrict coverage during vacancy. And after 30 days of vacancy, uh, if you haven't reported it to your insurance coverage, uh, sorry, your insurance carrier, all coverages will cease. So you need to make sure you're in contact with your insurance broker and, and update your coverages as required. So is there insurance to cover a vacant home then? Like a separate policy that would cover that as opposed to, you know, I'm a homeowner living in my home day to day and so forth. Like, obviously you want to still be covered in some way, shape or form, even if it is vacant. Yes. So what normally the insurance companies will offer what's called a vacancy permit. You will pay an additional premium for that based on the number of months that the home will be vacant. Um, and immediately upon moving back into the home that gets removed and any premiums that you've paid would be refunded for any unused portion of that time. Okay, good. Yeah. Important again to note though that the coverages are still restricted yeah, still during that period. Uh, so you want to make sure that you've got the property proper security in place. And that is also a conversation you want to have with your contractors. What type of security will they be providing the site? Um, so, some uh, big exposures are theft of building materials. Maybe they've dropped off the materials on the front yard and somebody comes at night and picks them up. Uh, is the property going to be fenced uh, for any trespassers at night, uh, things like this. Those are all really good questions that you want to ask your contractor. Yeah. And again, I mean, even just like site protection is what I would term that as. Yes, it does. There is a cost to it. There's a line item cost to it, but it's well worth it so that you're not having to deal with, like you say, theft of materials or um, a friend of mine who did a big uh, home renovation. Um, they actually had their appliances stolen. Yes. Yeah. Like, it's not unheard. Um, you know, they had like they had they had lock up and everything, but someone broke a window and the appliances weren't even installed into the cabinetry. They were just sitting in the middle of the room waiting to be installed in the next you know handful of days or whatever. And they had a break in and someone stole all their appliances. That's correct. Yeah. Unfortunately, these things can happen. So it's really important you have those conversations yeah. of what your coverage restrictions are. Uh, it's also important to note that you don't necessarily have to have the course of construction insured by your homeowner's policy, you can purchase what's called a course of construction policy that provides uh, more extensive coverage uh, for you for things like theft of materials, materials and transit. Um, you can get 
potentially some vandalism coverage, things like this. Usually those vandalism especially will be excluded from your insurance policy while the property is under construction. Right. Yeah. Okay. So um, now what happens if, you know, after the, the, the work has been completed and a number of months or even a year later, something happens that is related to the work that was done, um, say, uh, some plumbing fails and you have a flood. Um, now, if it's just a regular homeowner policy, like what happened with us, there was no work going on, a pipe burst, we had a, a flood, it had nothing to do with any work of any kind. <laughs> and it was covered under our homeowner policy, like there was no one to, to sue or go after, nobody had some negligence going on. But if something did happen after the fact, and there was an incident, so what's the process to try and figure out, is this a homeowner policy thing or is this, I need to go after my contractor? I know it's a pretty pretty broad question, but generally is, is there a time limit or is there sort of a, a trigger sort of threshold where it is one person's problem over another? Um, maybe you can shed some light on that. Um, well, it really depends on the cause of loss. Uh, if it is a loss that could be expected, then it might fall back on your own home insurance policy. You, that's really where you would start regardless is with your own personal home insurance policy. Your home insurer will then come and send an adjuster and take a look at the loss that's happened and then establish how the loss occurred. If it's established that it was due to the workmanship, they will then subrogate against your contractor on your behalf. So that's why it's really important that you have the proper insurance coverage in place during construction and afterwards so that you have that uh, representation for you. If not, you will end up having to, to chase after the contractor yourself. Um, and that's provided that you have actually hired a general contractor. Uh, and also a large benefit of hiring a general contractor, if it happened, let's say there is uh, damage to walls, They're, the walls are now cracking. However, you maybe you used um, one trade to do the drywall, another trade to do the framing, another trade to do other areas of work. Uh, if you used a general contractor, they will be the ones that will have to establish which um, trade was responsible for the loss or their insurer. Uh, if you've done it all on your own, unfortunately, you're going to be chasing them all on your own. And it usually ends up with a lot of he said, she, she, she said. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. So, I mean, is there, is there a time limit? Um, say like we did, a, someone did a renovation and five years later, something happens versus like in a, under a year um, or maybe 10 years later, uh, you know, like I, I like I would have, I would imagine there would be a time threshold in there somewhere where that, you know, general wear and tear or, you know, sometimes, you know, faucets fail or whatever, like it just like, is there, is there a time limit that would sort of be naturally expected? I wouldn't say so much there is a time limit. It really is going to be depend on what is outlined in the contract that you've, you've got between uh, your the client and the contractor. Uh, sometimes there will be time restrictions in, in those contracts. However, if it's due to a, maybe a material defect uh, or something like that, it, it really does depend because most appliances will have extended warranties, things like this, that maybe it shouldn't have failed within that period of time. At the end of the day, having insurance in place is what's most important because the adjusters will take care of that for you. And then they'll all go around and around and around and they'll figure out who's going to pay. And I mean, <clears throat> I think, yeah, the insurance, I mean, we, we all, I mean, I know I hate to have to pay so much of insurance, uh, the money that I pay every year for different things. But uh, I said at the top of the show, like, I am so grateful that we had it because it was a non-issue. Like, I was like, I know this is going to be covered by my insurance. <laughs> yes, it is a headache and yes, it's a hassle, but you know, there was no like sleepless night around how much is this going to cost me? Like I knew that it was going to be covered. So I think there's a fair amount of, you know, peace of mind, um, making sure that you are insured at every step along the way, That's regardless correct. whether it's a homeowner or your vacancy or whatever it happens to be. Um, now what happens if you, the homeowner, do a DIY project and something goes sideways 
are you insured if you you do damage to your own house by accident? Unfortunately, uh, faulty workmanship is generally excluded under most insurance policies. Uh, the resultant damage, however, may be insured. Again, it's going to depend on the cause of loss. Uh, if you, you have to make sure you've got the proper permits in place, uh, things like that, even if you are do, doing it on your own, the insurance companies cannot repair or replace something that was not built legally. So you have to make sure you're aware of the bylaws uh, that uh, are applicable to the renovation pro project you're doing. And then, of course, making sure that you've got the proper certifications to do those types of things. If you are, for example, changing a faucet and maybe the, uh, you forgot to turn off the water while changing the faucet and you, you've broken the faucet. So the faucet itself would not be covered. The result in water damage may. So, right. yes, you... There is some coverages afforded. However, once again, your work will never be covered. Uh, any costs of replacing materials that you've maybe already purchased, things like that, would be entirely on the homeowner. So the moral of the story there is to make sure either you're really qualified to do the work or do things that are not gonna in, in any way damage your home. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> because we, there's a lot of people that think that they, they can do some DIY work. And when people ask us about it, I often will say, well, uh, do you have the tools? Do you have the qualifications? Do you have the time? And, you know, things like painting or putting in baseboards, like those are all pretty innocuous types of DIY projects. But if you're going to be doing a, like a structural wall removal and putting a beam in and, you know, doing some um, posts for their, your point load and all that kind of thing, that's where I say, mm, maybe you should draw the line there unless you happen to be, a, you know, under advisement of a structural engineer and you are, say, a, a carpenter, right? Like, go ahead, fill your boots, do your right. thing. But, you know, I, I wouldn't recommend like your average Joe kind of person that has like a handful of rusty tools in the shed <laughs> try and tackle that kind of that kind of renovation, right? Um, so I think that, you know, people need to be, be aware that, you know, they can do damage to their homes and maybe they would not be covered. So that's a sort of a good way to, th to think about whether or not it is something you actually do want to take on, or maybe it really should be something that you hire someone for. Um, right. Yeah. Now, uh, you know, there's always like a few additional tips or stories or scenarios or, or something along that line that we all have to share just, you know, <laughs> along the lines in our, in our daily lives and what our professions are. Are there any other sort of things that you would recommend people consider or think about from an insurance perspective when they are going to be moving ahead with a renovation of any kind? Uh, don't overlook your liabilities. Um, when you're doing any kind of renovation, uh, remember that as the property owner, you are responsible for everything that is happening on that property. Even if it's done by a third party or a contractor, especially if you are maybe acting as your own general contractor, you are responsible for securing the site and site safety. You want to make sure that everybody that's working on your property is properly insured and that they have WCB. You don't want to take on those liabilities on yourself. Uh, especially when it comes to children, we owe the utmost duty of care to children. Maybe they can't even read the signs that you've posted. <laughs> Make sure that there isn't anything attractive for them to go climb and jump on, because as we know, if, if children get the opportunity, they will. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, 100%. <laughs> All right. Well, Sonia, thanks so much for coming on the show today. It's been great chatting with you about all of this, and you've given us some really great nuggets to consider um, about insurance and, and, you know, maybe do we DIY it? Let's make sure we do our own personal due diligence when we're hiring some people. Um, and before we close out the show, I just wanted to get you to answer a couple of fun questions. And just so everybody knows, uh, Sonia doesn't know what these questions are. So I'm just going to throw them at you and I want like just the, the gut reaction out of you. So it, it, it's nothing like nefarious, don't worry. Um, so question number one, what would you like to change or renovate most about uh, in your home? Is there anything that you have on the horizon for you that you're thinking, oh, I'd love to change this or get, you know, something different going on? The backyard, patio, full on deck. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. No, I can't live it. <laughs> you know, uh, especially in uh, during this, you know, time of the pandemic. Uh, and, and even if, if not, I mean, we live in beautiful BC and we do have a lot of patio time in the summer. And I think that, uh, you know, having that outdoor space, that indoor outdoor ability to kind of just spread out a little bit further with your friends and your family um, is definitely a valuable thing. All right, so next, but just the second question and that's all there's gonna be. Uh, are you handy? And if so, what is your favorite tool? And if not, what tool do you think would be the most fun to use? No, I'm not handy. My favorite tool is a butter knife. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I love it. <laughs> and uh, if I was handy, I would like to. Um, I would like to enjoy painting, but I've been told that I'm not allowed to touch a brush. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. All right. Well, again, it's been great having you on the show today, Sonia. And for those who are listening, be sure you have the appropriate coverage for any renovations you have in place. And don't be afraid to reach out to your insurance um, broker to ensure that you do have that coverage. And also, don't be afraid to tell them that you have done improvements because it may actually lower your insurance rate, not increase it, which is all our big fear. So again, thank you for having, or sorry, thank you for coming today, Sonia. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me, Brandy. You, you guys have a wonderful day. You too. All right, everyone. Ciao for now.